Let's talk about uh, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. So what we want to do is uh, kind of define, we're talking about uh, momentum, conservation of momentum, and we want to define the difference between these two quantities. Well, in the extreme, what's called a perfect elastic collision is defined when the kinetic energy before, the total kinetic energy before, in other words, uh, if you have two objects colliding, uh, then what's the kinetic energy of the first one plus the kinetic energy of the last one is equal to the kinetic energy after. Again, the sum of their individual kinetic energies. So in other words, if I had to write this, this would be one half m1 v1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared equals one half m1 v1 final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared. That would be a, what's called a perfect elastic collision, uh, if that were to be true. Now, of course, in real life, that rarely happens. The closest thing you get to it maybe is an atomic collision, where you're firing a proton at an atom, uh, and it would bounce off, and uh, you would get pretty much close to that being the case. But you can do approximations based on that, and you'll get answers that are close to what you got, depending on what on how much energy you lost. There are calculations we can do to, to find out what the energy loss would be. Uh, the, um, on the other end of the extreme, see on one end we have a perfect elastic collision. This would be 0% kinetic energy loss. And this would be the so-called perfect elastic collision. And on the other end of the extreme would be um, the perfect I put that in quotes inelastic collision. That's where you lose a tremendous amount of kinetic energy. I guess you could write here 100% energy loss. Imagine a bullet being fired into a block, and the block was bolted down to the table. Well, that's it. It lost all the kinetic energy was gone. Um, it's probably closer to like 99.9% uh, is what you get if you fire a bullet into a very heavy mass. You practically lose all the kinetic energy. Or uh, So... You could get as much as 100%. Um, so on those are the two extremes. So a perfect inelastic collision is basically there's a large energy loss. Uh, it's not necessarily 100%. Perfect inelastic collision would be something that occurs is when the two objects stick together. Otherwise, it's not a perfect after the collision. Otherwise, it's not a perfect inelastic collision. So, in real life, you end up with something probably in everyday life, something probably in, in this range right here anywhere from 5 to 90% energy loss. Um, and you can do the equations and see what happens after you get the, uh, the numbers, and we'll, we'll take a look at that maybe. Now, the perfect inelastic collision, uh, where they stick together, is a very uh, interesting setup. If the objects stick together, so object 1 is moving this way, mass 1, mass 2, uh, maybe stationary or maybe moving, uh, let's say it's uh, stationary. If ob mass 1 uh, hits mass 2, that should be, uh, and they stick together. Now, mass 1 and mass 2 are traveling together at some velocity. 
So let's take a look at our uh, conservation of momentum equation. And, whoops, I'm uh, writing squared here, and none of that is squared, equals m1v1 final plus m2v2 final. And again, this is for the perfect inelastic collision, where they stick together. Well, if they stick together at the end, which is right here, okay, uh, what must be true of their final velocities? They must be the same. They're stuck together. They're moving at the same. So we can write this as m1v1 initial plus m2v2 initial equals m1v final, right? It's the same as the other one plus m2v final. Well, now can, what can I do with that equation? If you said factor out the masses, then you were correct. We will factor out the masses and we get m1 plus m2 v final. And this is the equation for a perfect inelastic collision. Very simple equation to use. Perfect inelastic collision. Uh, very simple to use because the mass is added together and so there's really only one velocity. You can know the two initial velocities and you only have one unknown. As long as you know the masses, you only have one unknown. So it doesn't get tricky like the elastic collision gets.